real estate, like any other entrepreneurial endeavor, is really, really hard. There are highs, there are lows. These feelings, these experiences are inevitable and they are normal. They are par for the course. But the question is, how do you know when you're experiencing one of these lows, whether or not it's time to move on or whether or not these feelings and these experiences are fleeting and you should persevere through? In today's video, I'm going to give you some insights and questions to ask yourselves to know with absolute certainty whether or not it's time to call it quits or you just need to keep on moving forward. Let me preface before we really get into it. There is nothing that you will ever do really that's going to generate passive income that is easy, that doesn't require time. It all requires hard work, but more importantly, it all requires consistency. But the first thing we have to get out of the way is that these feelings are normal. These lows that you're experiencing are extremely normal. Everybody feels them. Everybody has felt them. People maybe aren't as vocal as you'd like them to be because sometimes you want to know that other people are struggling too, that you're not alone. Hear it from me. I've worked with hundreds of agents. I've spoken with hundreds of entrepreneurs. You are not alone. Every single entrepreneur and real estate agent that I've ever spoken to has struggled at some point in time. So please know you are not alone. There is no fast track to success. But again, the question is, is it time to leave or is it time to continue? There's something truly magnificent about bamboo. If you plant bamboo and you water it and you nurture it and you fertilize it for four to five years, absolutely nothing will happen. So you'll be going out into your garden, nurturing and tending to your bamboo every single day, and you won't see any progress. But all of a sudden, what happens after four to five years is this bamboo sprouts out of the ground and within six weeks grows up to 90 feet. That is what business is like. This whole idea of get rich quick, Forbes 30 under 30, it's very, very rare. These are one-offs. And to tell you the truth, to create a business with a strong, solid foundation, I would rather have a business that took time to build than a business that shot up because those foundations are not going to be as secure. There are really three considerations when it comes to knowing whether or not real estate is right for you or if you should move on in another direction entirely. The first one is, what are your short-term necessities? Do you need money now or can you afford to wait? The second consideration is, what are your long-term goals? Are you looking for freedom? Are you looking to make a lot of money? Are you looking to generate more time in your life, to have more fun, to spend more time with the people that you love? What are your long-term goals? And that's really going to give us insight as to whether or not it's worth all of the effort that you're going to have to go through to actually accomplish these things. And then the third consideration is, why did you actually get into this into the first place. Let me break each of these three steps down. If you need money now, you have three options. You can either quit real estate altogether and go and find another job. You can get a part-time job and work real estate part-time and your other job part-time. And the third thing is you can do the jobs that you really don't want to do in real estate, like cold calling, like door knocking, and set yourself a lot of time every single day to do that and stay consistent with it. The money will start to come in relatively quickly, but it is a lot of work. In order to figure out which of those three you should be doing, let's move on to consideration number two, which is what are your long-term goals? Let's say your long-term goal was freedom, to generate that passive income where you had as much time to do what you want and you had enough money to afford this lifestyle. Honestly, strictly from the perspective of freedom, any real estate investments that you make, any income that you make from your real estate investments will provide more freedom. Because yes, you will make money from transactions as a real estate agent, but in order to provide that passive income where you're getting the freedom that you want, you will need to invest and to associate yourselves with people who understand investments so you can get great return on those investments. And being in the real estate world, connecting with top investors, real estate agents that specialize with investors, or yourself, maybe you could specialize in investments as well. But the idea is, is that being in a real estate world as an industry and networking with the right people will give you access to deals that maybe you won't have access to if you were to leave the industry. So when it comes to freedom, being in the industry over an extended period of time, getting connected with the right people, working with the right investors, that will provide more of an opportunity strictly from a freedom perspective. So maybe not even as a real estate agent, meaning the transactions that you're doing, but just connecting with the right people, that will go a long way for you. The second consideration is time. If what you want in your life is more time to live the life that you actually want to live, here's the challenge. Real estate as an agent is not always the most scalable thing. That said, there are ways of scaling your business. And as your business starts to grow, as you start to make more money, you will find other ways of scaling. You can become a real estate coach. You could become a team leader, a broker. There are other ways of actually scaling your business besides for just being a real estate agent. But... The caveat is you have to be a successful real estate agent before you can start scaling in these other ways. So many times I see people trying to build teams, build brokerages too 
fast. And if they cannot offer their agents underneath them the right support, the right knowledge, the right accountability for them to go ahead and make their own success, then it's going to be very hard to retain these kinds of agents. So find your own success. And then once you do, you will be able to find ways of scaling it afterwards. So even though you may not have a plan right now to know exactly how you can scale it to provide that time back in your life, just know that when you become a more successful agent, if and when that does happen, you will find ways of actually scaling it. So from a time perspective, you've just got to stay the course and it will come in the future. Let's say hypothetically you wanted to make a lot of money. That was your goal in your life. That was your long-term goal. You can make a lot of money in real estate. And as you start to generate more transactions, let's say even if you work with first-time home buyers, as you start to build more of a name for yourself, you can start branching off into other demographics, other niches as well. You can go all the way to investors, luxury home buyers. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, stay with it, generate more transactions and more and more and more. And then eventually it will happen. Now, understanding that everything we're talking about right now is a moot point because we're talking about for the future. It's just important to consider what our long-term goals are because that's going to be how we're going to give context for the entire calculation that we're going to make in just a moment once we've laid out all of the factors. The third consideration is why did you get into real estate in the first place? Maybe you wanted to help people. Maybe you wanted to make a lot of money. Maybe you wanted to provide a great life for your family. Maybe you wanted to learn how to invest in real estate and becoming a real estate agent was the best way of doing that. So the important step here is understanding why you got into it in the first place. And then when you have that information, you're now equipped to make the final calculation. Here's the verdict. If you need money now, you should stay in real estate on the following conditions. Number one, you still believe in your why. Your why is still prevalent. You still have a desire to help people get into their homes and you can find a solution for your short-term success. That means getting a part-time job. That means doing all of the work that until now you haven't really wanted to do, like cold calling. And that means if you are going to do that, then get a list of people and call for two to three hours every single day and worship that time block. Because if you're not going to do the work necessary to generate that short-term income, then maybe it is time to call it quits. If you do not need money now, if you can wait, the only question is, does your why still resonate with you? Is it still prevalent? Because if it is, if real estate is the best way for you to accomplish that why, whatever that why was, then know that just leaving real estate to work in another industry that you can maybe generate some income quicker and get rich quicker, it doesn't exist. Real estate is a great medium, a great channel to actually make those dreams come true. So the only question is, do you still believe in your why? And if you do, then you should stay in real estate. But if you do not believe in your why, maybe it is time to call it quits. But please know that you're not alone. This is something that every entrepreneur goes through at some point in time. There will always be highs, there will always be lows. But if your why is strong, then I believe that you should persevere and keep on trying to make it happen. If this is still something you're struggling with, please do feel free to reach out to me, message me over Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to have a conversation with you and really try to analyze and dissect whether or not real estate is right for you because it's not for everybody. It is a lot of work. Work, and I just hope you know that I'm there for you. So let me know if you need any extra guidance or assistance, and I'll be happy to take the time to talk to you. Best of luck. Keep pushing through.